Well, the trend of Tempo Storm winning from the second pick position and importantly on their battlegrounds continues as they are currently up two to zero over Team Freedom on Dragonshire. You know, Team Freedom, they did bring the fight. They almost got a keep. It was a much closer game, but that was a master class of how to play Cursed Hollow j -Hal. Yeah, and I think the point that you made is how well Tempo plays on their battlegrounds with their strategies from the second pick position. And for Team Freedom, I think it's a chance for them to say, hey, maybe we should take that to our battleground with our strategies, because Tempo Storm, again, up until this point, only dropped one game so far from that second pick position and it's where they thrive, and so we'll see what Team Freedom wants to do. Freedom has been willing to switch over to a Battleground choice and be willing to give up first pick from that, and maybe if we do see them do that, they'll take us back to Braxis Holdout as they pick that versus... Winner, winner. Winner, winner. Uh, we'll have that back up soon, but they did do that versus Endemic. It's gonna be Tomb of the Spider Queen that we're going to, and that is a Team Freedom choice. Yeah, there it is. I can dig it. I mean, it, it plays well. Again, their macro, their meta style of a Hanzo, of Tassadar compositions, potentially Chromie, all of those things excel on this battleground. So we'll see if that comes out. As a hero you and I discussed previously, Gul'dan has kind of fallen off. It's something they played in the past. Doubt we'll see that. Of course, the Jaina as well. I think the Greymane has a little less priority on this, although I believe Tempo played one game mm -hmm. on this. But in terms of the hierarchy, some of those other heroes tend to win out a little bit differently on this. Both teams have been willing to pick Tomb the Spider Queen, so it's a fairly equal battleground as far as who jumps to mind and has the power, the strength level, the higher strength level here. Uh, Tempo Storm has also been willing to draft Maiev here and even uh, build more into the team fighting over something like Wave Clear the Camps by having Maiev Genji. But in our, the previous series from them, they wanted to do that on Dragonshire and they do that on Tomb. They didn't on Dragonshire. They seem to be a lot more wave clear and camp clear focused. So I am expecting more of the adjustments from Tempo Storm to carry through on this map too. I'd really like to see Team Freedom maybe get an early Hanzo pick. Okay. And they'll have it in that two, their 1-2 spot. Tempo Storm, I don't know if they're a first pick Hanzo team. Again, Johanna I think is going to come to mind in the early part of this draft. but. After that sick four-man Dragon Arrow from Ben to win a game on this map previously for Tempo Storm and the way that he plays that and the way that he can follow up on his teammates, I don't know if I want to give that to Tempo Storm. Twice Team Freedom early picked Tassadar and Karazim. Well, the Karazim was later on with the Tassadar and did like to pair it with Tracer. That's going to be taken away by Tempo Storm. It was actually Team Freedom who played Greymane on this map, along with Ural and Chromie versus Endemic, and they won it. Tracer and Genji out of the way. Tempo now has first pick. Is it Johanna? Is it Ural? Or is it the possible Hanzo? I feel like Johanna, if you did want to get a little bit tricky with your draft, then you definitely need the wave clear yes. from that frontline position. But Tempo Storm, again, has a wide variety of heroes that they can play. They have multiple styles while still keeping their traditional play style alive. Both the games we have from Tempo Storm on Tomb were from the second pick position. So, you know, Mal it's been Johanna plus their support. Malfurion was one game, Deckard King was the other. So I'm wondering if it's more important, they feel like it's even more important to get the support there. I think it's likely to be the Johanna though. I would be more than comfortable with the Johanna in the first pick here. Using every second of it. Ooh, Urel. Okay. Johanna Blaze is fine, Johanna Hanzo, but Team Freedom does do things a little bit differently at times. We've seen several compositions from them on this battleground, including some stitches attempts in the past, dating back to last phase. But Johanna, again, the meta has shifted so much. I just don't know how Johanna makes it past this. So Johanna Yarel having an unkillable frontline, enabling a backline of Finn and Van, the Finn combo, that's just too much. I think definitely a warrior, but I don't know if it's necessary to get a solo laner here for Team Freedom. Nasmus is very flexible. He can play a lot of different supports, and he's been willing to flex even something like Leoric on this map. So unless they really feel like Blaze is integral to having that part of the frontline too, Blaze 
does make that standoff with Urel slightly easier than some other heroes, but I think now they'll go ahead and stick with this. So they do get Johanna in place, but that may leave them with some of their not as favored options for the back line later on. That would be my only concern. Yeah, especially because you can expect Tempo Storm to pick up one of their own here, whether it's a Hanzo, whether it's a Jaina, maybe even a Greymane. I don't know if Greymane would fall in this early, but I anticipate Tempo Storm to pick up one of their damage dealers here and then potentially ban out one of those options that you're referencing for Team Freedom. We've seen the Jaina banned out in game number one. I mean, it very easily could show up here in game number three. Especially with that Johanna pick already for Team Freedom. Diablo, Malfurion, wow. they don't move into range damage. Those still like to ban it. Well, maybe not now since they haven't gotten any. Yeah, now, I mean, it's a little bit trickier. I mean, if you, if you ban out one and then they pick up the other, then could get tricky. Deckard, obviously, we know does play very well, but Team Freedom, of course, with that Karazim. Diablo on the other side. You know, Yoda used to play a fair amount of Tychus. We haven't really seen a lot of Tychus recently, but Tychus is one of the better counters towards Diablo. Does very well on Tomb of the Spider Queen, especially post level 10. With that Odin, can siege up. Anti siege is definitely there. I would not be opposed to a Tychus here. I've seen a little bit of Tychus here and there the past week or so, and this is the moment where I think Tychus is the answer. Maybe, sort of. We'll see if Freedom agrees with you. It's been a, it's been a bit, so I don't mm -hmm. expect it, but I would really like it. Hanzo banned from Team Freedom. Probably going to move into the uh, Phoenix then, unless they themselves want to get Greymane. Chromie banned from Tempo Storm. Heads up, Chromie on Team the Spider Queen is a classic. Dating all the way back to, I think it was Europe that played to her here first. And Lutano has been liking his Chromie play. A lot. Mm -hmm. Well, Tychus Jaina have a lot of firepower, a lot of burst potential, a lot of sustain, a lot of wave clear. Phoenix Jaina, though, too. Phoenix Jaina as well. There are a lot of options. And I think Jaina does maybe fit this category for this team in this slot. If this was Hero's Hearth, I'd be screaming Jaina all day. But Team Freedom, again, will mix things up. It's like different day, different team. And sometimes we just kind of see them go back to other strategies that they try and pull out. The only thing with Phoenix and Jaina, both of them are generally who Yoda plays. Mm -hmm. So for that case, maybe Freedom gets more aggressive with a different mage, less of the wave clear focus, more of uh, something like his Li Ming, since his Chromie's gone. A lot of options here for Team Freedom. You may leave one of those backliners to last two and get their support. They do. They get Deckard Kane and Greymane switches hands. Not what I anticipated there. I mean, Cursed Bullet still does have the percentage base damage if you opt to go into that. Yorel and Diablo, very tanky. Diablo especially, easy to get souls with the rework, but even more so just due to the amount of minions on this. But for Tempo, we've known them to play a decent amount of Jaina. The Maev is also something to consider still. And Phoenix is still up. Lightning Breath plus Purification Salvo. Any slow setup that you can get on a lot of people is very nice when you have a Phoenix. Lots of damage. More damage, yeah. 50% more the slow targets. I, it's just, they can pick anything. I mean, it, there, there's such devastating combos that they, okay, this is I not wonder, the one that I anticipated. I Not the Vala, I didn't wonder about the Vala, but I did wonder if Tassadar, the old Tassadar Diablo, an unkillable composition to be sure, with a Vala to back that up. Fan, I believe should be the Vala here. When we talked to Fan last year at mid-season brawl, Zing C was still around from China. We were talking about better Greymane, better Vala, and Fan, where Zing C was putting on a masterful performance of his own, was saying, I think my Vala's better. Cause but Zing he will still be rocking the E-Star spray. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. In respect. <laughs> I mean, there was mutual respect from mm -hmm. both members there. It's just they know that they were two of some of the best there. Unfortunately, Fan was uh, sitting with us and not playing in that tournament. This year, redeemed himself. Well, Deckard Kane is going to give a lot of sustain, but there is a ton for Tempo Storm between the beefy front line and the Malfurion and Tassadar. Team Freedom now has some difficult choices. 
Wow. Oh, make that choice with a Gul'dan. When you have a double support composition that wants to stick together like this, one way that you can possibly get kills from it is to split it up, and that is exactly what Horrify aims to do. In Greymane, oftentimes the problem is that you get the split up, but you don't have somebody that can kill the split target. Right. Greymane fits that role pretty well. He's got well. that gap closer. And if it is Diablo that does get split and Cursed Bullet is the pickup, then you can rip through that health pool but if that horrifying, you don't get that instant blow up and there's a shield available from Tassadar, that will buy enough time for June to potentially pop Tranquility, which against the Gul'dan seems a little bit more likely, especially mm -hmm. if Echoed Corruption does get completed and puts a lot of like uh, dot damage out. Yeah. So I think that that is a pickup in particular. Do you think it's enough versus Tempo Storm from Team Freedom, the Gul'dan Greymane? Stealing the Greymane away is nice, but this Gul'dan counter. Vala is super squishy. Yeah. Vala is super squishy, and if you can try and find your way onto that Vala, yeah, and Greymane is the one that can do that. Everybody else, maybe not so much. Johanna can get the blinds. Johanna can maybe get the setup, but I think it's going to ultimately come down to Nasmus, the flanks of Blaze, things to get in those channels, in those pockets onto the backside. To, to initiate, to find that lockdown. I think that's where it's really going to have to play into. Well, we're ready to get into the game. This is game three. This is everything for Team Freedom if they want to stay in this series. But for Tempo Storm, they're looking for a win so they can head into their match versus Heroes Hearth Esports undefeated. Well, everything pretty standard here. Deckard is going to go into that Sapphire gem at level one to make sure and get those slows. Still waiting on a few others. And Diablo seen a little bit of Feast on Fear, but we've also seen a lot of Devils do. I wondered about Scroll of Identify for the armor reduction that we, that June almost always picks, but then again, how that would work out with a possible Call as Light to add more. Would have been interesting, would have been fun to get to see, but either way, instead more of the slow to uh, make it easier to land your Scroll of Sealing, and there is a lot of chain crowd control from Team Freedom in the front line there to go along with this Decker Kane. What a knockback! <laughs> That's one way to open up and have a major impact. Zagrug gets charged of his own. Yoda on the Gray Man, which is not necessarily what I expected, but I just want to see how aggressive Fan is on this ball. I mean, he is aggressive. Looks pretty aggressive, Jay Howe. I mean, if I've got a Tassadar, I might be a little bit more aggressive than normal. He is tracing down every single front. He does not care. Who's going to lock him down right now? Look at I, too, Great. play on the enemy side of the map. Great charge. <laughs> Makes Johanna use her iron skin. Later on, I, I don't know what build we're going to see Diablo move into if he wants to have more damage. Nesmus whiffed on that jet propulsion and then ended up getting knocked right back into those tower shots. That's going to be enough. Fan shows up. Yoda is running for his life. Uh, if we see the devastating charge build, maybe there's so many different charge places, much like Infernal Shrines, around the turn-in points. And that would add a lot to the damage of Tempo Storm to have that from the Diablo, but I could just as easily see the Fire Stomp build with the damage reduction later on makes Greymane and uh, Gul'dan, Greymane, if he's trying to dive in, be able to do a lot less. There's that spell shield picked up there by Cattle at level one. Not the Devil's Dew, nor the Feast on Fear, but Soul Shield a little bit, a little bit different against the Mage style here. Mm -hmm. And Echoed Corruption, which you smartly called out. I haven't seen a ton of it, but in this case, Lutano will be looking to get that Ruinous Affliction damage later on, and then have the finisher be that Greymane. Fan is living on Team Freedom side of the map. I he's mean, living vicariously. He, he's living out his inner <laughs> Zing C. That is for dang sure. That play style is just, it's something. Uh, as we've seen a lot of Urels against Deckard Kane going into that little bit of soft cleanse action, giving that helping hand over to those allies in case they do get rooted, does have that cleanse available for allies. Is Fan is going to hang out here? Waiting for Zugrug to come forward so he can continue to harass them. He's channeling his inner honey badger. Because he does not care. I can't stop watching. I know, I can't like, either. 
It's so amazing. We should probably do our job, though. I Bruiser's mean, here for look, Team Freedom. There's nine other people on this battleground. They all make sure that everything functions accordingly, and mm -hmm. Fan doesn't do it alone. But j -Hal only has eyes for Fan in this game. I mean, a lot of people have said that about me. I think Fan is just an absolutely tremendous player. Had a little bit of a slow start at midseason brawl, but I think ended up by the end of that tournament, put on an excellent performance. Still one of the best in the world, and I will argue that all day long. Level 5 has approached us. Tempo Storm has been turning in those gems diligently and now has enough to get the first Web Weaver phase. Not only Hand of Freedom, but also the Call is Light giving some extra armor. Should Team Freedom look to burst through some damage, Glaurung jumps in and Nazmus dives out. Tempo Storm, I do believe it was Tempo Storm that we saw have a ton of control over the lanes and then when they got the first turn in phase, they wreaked havoc over their opponents last time we saw them on Tomb the Spider Queen. You know, one thing that's actually going really well here for Lutano is he's actually already at 17 stacks, which you need 40 of those. And he's done a pretty decent job giving his lack of targets in a lot of sense. But the heavy rotations here have definitely allowed for a few more stacks than normal. Considering he's been a lot in that solo lane, being that clear in those top areas has done pretty well. I even looked at the health bar just real quick of Tassadar, who ate, I think, a full corruption stack before he got a heal and a shield of his own. That'll come in handy, and even if Team Freedom do lose this first turn and then, being able to have that scaling damage later on will be something that they can rely on to start getting back in the game. Another knockback. The scroll of ceiling to zone, and uh, Zugrug makes it out alive. Same with Nazmus, but every lane, Jay Hao feels like Team Freedom just trying to hang on, running away from Tempo Storm, clearing out whatever lane they possibly can uh, get an edge in. But it was, it felt inevitable that Tempo Storm would get this first turn in. Not only did they get the first turn in, Gilly, but Team Freedom has failed to turn in a single gem yet. And this is something, again, that Tempo Storm will do. They will get turn in after turn in after turn. It doesn't matter if you've got five or ten. You turn in and you make that rotation. You're not losing anything. And so it's better to relinquish that, minimize the risk. And for Team Freedom, you lose one hero. You lose two heroes, and all of a sudden, that one to two turn ins that you've already accumulated, all of a sudden it looks like one turn in, and you're desperately trying to get back into a game against a team like Team or like Tempo Storm. That is super difficult to do. Well, Tempo Storm is spread out across all lines to keep the soak going, keep the damage going, and try to get to heroic abilities faster than Team Freedom. We see the Death Dealer build for Fan, which allows him to be as aggressive as he would like to be, which in this game has been pretty aggressive. Root's already there as Caterpillar dives in, gets the kill, and takes out Gul'dan, which clears up enough space to allow the Web Weaver and the rest of Tempo Storm to finish off this fort in the mid. He had the Tempo spray, not the E-Star spray. No! He had one job. Either way, 10 picked up here. Tempo Storm dominating all areas of the battleground as they take down mid-fort. They've had the turn-ins. They've had the two kills. They all, they're also sitting on another turn-in in just a moment when they pick up one more gem. It's just a matter of do they go straight for the double turn-in since they have the 10-tier advantage? Do they try and add a camp on top of this so that they can get an even stronger push to snowball this? But Team Freedom recognizes that there is another way of potentially coming at them. I expect them to sit on that, not cap it right away and wait for the next turn in. Yeah, they're, there's trouble brewing for Team Freedom and they need all the help they can get defending. Getting the bruisers, which they are just about to get. Tempo Storm's working on theirs too. And they did hold this. But they've also been able to see that Tempo Storm's getting a double camp. They held it for a while. Now Team Freedom comes in looking for the invade. They don't have heroic abilities though, which makes that fairly perilous, especially because you lose people here when there are web weavers and camps heading towards you, and that could have been a snowball in the direction that is not good for you. Well, here we go. Second web weavers turned in for Tempo Storm. Time to make something happen more with this push. And they already took down one fort. See if they can make more happen for Team Freedom. They really need 10. Nice shadow charge there. Wow. That's gonna keep Nazmus out there. He has 10 bunkers available if he wants to use it. He does. I imagine that's going to be all for not. I don't see him making it out of there. Just misses, actually, on lighting up that fire to keep him alive, at least for a few seconds longer. But it does buy enough time for Team Freedom to deal with the pushes in the other lane. You see the minimap, Greymane top, 
dealing with the middle, but the pressure is mounting here in the bottom for Tempo. Yeah, Tempo's looking for 13. They're looking to get this keep opened up. Maybe get some keep damage on, if, on it if they can. This is the kind of composition where you can sit around a little bit with that double support comp and the strong front line of Glaurung and Caterpillar. Fan hanging in, putting in the damage, brings the keep down to uh, down a quarter of its health. Bar before Team Freedom forces Tempo Storm back. Tempo will respect that Freedom now having heroics, having the horrify, stay a while and listen to these are scary things to try to siege into. Well, for Team Freedom, again, they have not turned in a single gem. There's going to be a charge over the vision is there. Collusion is just getting burned down as we now see Bless Shield comes out in response, but Tranquility already out. Lutano under assault by Glaurung. The punishment continues here. Horrify will stop it for a moment. Nasmus Jet Propulsion Glaurung into a wall, but that strafe from Fan straight through all of Team Freedom and claims the life of Cool Dan. And with Horrify now down 13 here, Tempo Storm, all their members starting to heal back up with the double supporting, are going to stick around and continue the siege. This is tough for Team Freedom because now they're down a talent tier. They, again, not turning in a single gem, and now you find yourself down another talent tier. Where do you find it? For Tempo Storm, a lot of teams will rotate towards the boss. They'll try and force that. But for Tempo Storm, if you get the boss, you could potentially give up a turn in. And we'll see if Team Freedom can find that chance to turn in. Else, they just might start getting desperate to contest this. I think that was really amazing play from Tempo Storm to know that Team Freedom was going, going to be possibly rotating through that area, just sticking around and punishing them for that because they got the dive on the other side. Collusion doing his best to be where the support is supposed to be, which is behind your front line. Being able to get the jump on him, who normally, if you go in straight into Team Freedom, he's just going to drop stay a while and listen. They have Horrified too. Now the boss is there. Team Freedom did not recognize in time, did not get the turn, and Glowering was still watching it. Now they need to get this kill on Glowering, if nothing else. They got it, but they, they, Blaze put the oil and the fire down in the boss position. When you do that, you see the boss isn't there because you don't proc the boss, then it must be pulled somewhere else. They made a very, yes, they get the kill, but they made a very slow rotation as Fan is just punishing Zugrug for being anywhere near him. It does feel like Team Freedom are feeling the pressure of this comp. Yoda's gonna dive forward and get some damage down on Caterpillar who used the lightning breath over the wall. Tempo still waiting on the gems for a turn in. Team Freedom wanted to rotate back and defend versus this, but the time, there was some time bought from Tempo Storm just by getting Freedom to engage with them slightly. But Freedom are going to have a very narrow window to clear that up, get back in, and hope that they can get a turn in because they are sitting on 117 gems and counting in the Bank of Freedom. Well, they're on even talent tiers for now. It's a chance for them to get a turn in. If you get a turn in, it's about getting real estate. It's about getting some map control so that you can then move forward and get a double turn in, try and find your way back. But because Tempo Storm is close, to, so close to 16, that if you're Team Freedom, you have to make a lot happen in a very small window, as you just said. Yoda and Zugrug have a majority of these gems. Yoda doesn't have enough for a turn on his own, but Zugrug does. But Zugrug wants to be the frontliner. They just, they can't stop Tempo Storm from stalling every time Yoda wants to turn in. They want to stick together. They don't want to separate and try to send someone down bottom. They really can't because how pushed mid and bot are by Tempo Storm. That was excellently done too. It's just a product of how far ahead they are in this game. Somebody has to deal with that and that's going to mean Team Freedom has to back away. Greymane takes a very long route. Cattle Pillar and team, they soak up 16, but here's that wave you were just mentioning with the Siege Giants. It does force the response. A camp is going to be nice to be picked up. The Team Freedom, in just a matter of moments, they're going to be down another talent here. And for Tempo Storm, they're about to have another turn in. I mean, Z they have enough. Zug's starting the turn in now, bottom. The Psy Storm stops him. He uses Iron Skin to dodge Cattle Shadow Charge, but it's very scary because now Tempo Storm has closed the window. They have slammed it shut with 16. With the control of the lanes, of the turn-in points, 
they will get more web weavers. A third turn in in a row. Team Freedom can't catch a break. Well, the aggression that we've seen from Finn gets scary because he picked up Manticore, which is percentage-based damage, 5% damage of towards that target every third basic attack. And as much as he's been targeting those frontliners and not being punished for it, it is there. For Lutano, he really wants to complete his Echoed Corruption. It contributes so much to the wave clear. He's sitting on 36. If he can complete that, it does allow you to take down these Web Weavers web weaver so rapidly. I'm just wondering if they're even going to have a chance to do that. They'll get mid, but the zoning and the aggressive positioning of Tempo Storm gets bottom at no problem at all, puts the Web Weaver on the core, and the zoning continues. Team Freedom has to put Zugrug forward just so they can get Collusion and Lutano on this. Nasmus is fighting on one side, Zugrug on the other. Fan chasing him down, trying to get that kill. Use that Death Dealer damage, but didn't take a kill on Zugrug, but he's still having to heal back up before he comes in. I think this should be enough to hold for Team Freedom unless they try and force this, and I don't think that they should. I think they're in a decent position to find a comeback. They're not far from 16. If they lose a fight here, they lose the game. Anything outside of that, I think they can hold. But Top, Top is starting to be a problem, and once someone moves up there, Yoda cannot go down here. He cannot go down here. Well, he does fall, and that's the first. Horrify is used. Diablo is going to fall in return. He does have souls. Lutano is walking away for now, but Ben and Glauron keeping him locked in. Stay a while and listen, has locked in two members. There's going to be the stun on to Tassadar. Tempo has bought enough time for that top keep to fall. The shields have fallen. Fan working on the core, 70% going down. Nasmus is going to fall there as Fan confirms the kill. Tempo Storm looking in this right now. Yeah, this comp, we talked about it. They can stay here for quite a while and just try to keep the siege going with that double support despite the corruption damage from Lutano taking out Yoda has stifled a lot of what Team Freedom can do to stop this push. Tempo Storm slow rolls on in through a keep, through another keep, through the core eventually and three zeros. Team Freedom. Not a single gem turned in. 148 gems and that is more of a testament to Tempo Storm than it is to Team Freedom but Team Freedom with that wave clear of a ghoul Dan and you see the heavy rotations of Tempo Storm just start to gradually turn in. It was an almost an insurmountable lead that Team Freedom just couldn't seem to overcome at any point of that game. One thing I want to highlight about Tempo Storm is I feel like they get so much out of objectives that they claim. Curses, uh, web weavers, punishers, they just know how to get a lot out of them. And I think that's something that you know, if teams are going to have to reconsider, can we let them have this first web we were phase? And sometimes it just, it happens. They, they also were creating space for themselves to get those, but they get so much done. And a lot of that is part of their draft too. But Tempo Storm, that was miles cleaner than their match versus LFM2. Tempo Storm looks very good. They look like a coordinated, strong team to go up against Heroes Hearth Esports next week. I mean, this is the Tempo Storm that we knew last phase, mm -hmm. have been working towards. To come out with a performance like that today just restores my faith. It's not that it was lost. It's just there was an obvious step back for Tempo Storm, but it was clear reason why. But after today, my goodness, like I am so impressed with what they accomplished today. The last two games especially were almost flawless. That was so well played by that team. Well, let's... Let's talk to Cattle and figure out why it was so darn strong from them. Caterpillar, that was a dominant 3-0. How the heck did you do it? Ah, uh, I, I don't know. That's not quite <laughs> what I expected. We were expecting a really hard match, but we played really, really well today. We had kind of a rough week of scrims with a lot of throws here and there, but uh, we pulled it together today. and. Uh, yeah. yeah, you guys looked great. And especially after your match versus LFM, you guys lost a couple of those early games too. Uh, some games look scary. What is it that you guys talked about or worked on to ensure that you came in a lot stronger versus Team Freedom today? I think the biggest change today was just that we had much better communication, I think, and we just had a, a better grasp on how we wanted to play out the entire game and what our win condition was, and we played more towards that. And we only had like one small slip up in the dragon game. But other than that, we basically just played our comp how it was supposed to be played and then just slowly won the game. Yeah, that curse game was 
awesome. A nightmare for Frida, but awesome for you guys. Yeah. Uh, I have to ask, did anything happen to June? Is, is he okay? Did he have comms for the whole game? You know, everything <laughs> go as it was supposed to? Uh, surprisingly, there wasn't anything June today. It was just, I don't know, normal June. Gas it's in the really, car? really weird. Yeah. yeah, gas in the car and comms on, and good to hear. Jay, how any questions for Cattle? Yeah, Cattle, you guys have clear strategies when you come onto every single battleground, and I think a lot of those they're a lot easier when you've been winning for so long and you've been together for so long. But when they play out the way that they do, specifically that cursed game, I mean, is is it as easy as it looks? I mean, where does the difficulty lie in being able to execute so flawlessly? Uh, I think it's just all about knowing what your comp's strengths and weaknesses are. And so we just plan out our game plan and make plays based off of that, just to make sure we're never in a situation we don't want to be in. And then, yeah, if, if you have Hammer and you're getting the game going your way, like, you, she just can't get touched. And I want to address Vin, obviously, now coming onto this team. We know where he's at. We know what he's bringing to the table in these team fights. But what's it like bringing him up to speed to fill that role that obviously saw him filled? It's not just a matter of can you confirm kills, can you do damage. It's a matter of doing the little things. How has it been trying to bring him up to speed to basically play the tempo way and not just the HGC way? Because <laughs> you guys clearly play a different style, a much better style than I think a lot of people realize. Uh, it's been pretty smooth, honestly. He's he's learning really fast. He's really uh, receptive of like feedback and any criticism. And he always, if he has a question, he asks, makes sure that he knows what our like viewpoint on it is. And then he's yeah, he's just adapting really fast. And he's gonna be a a god soon. God soon. He's uh, he's definitely showing himself very well, as is uh, the cat one more time. So uh, we appreciate you guys coming on, <laughs> and uh, always the cat making a cameo as well. Well, uh, Cat and Cattle, uh, your next match is going to be versus Heroes Hearth, the one we've been looking forward to all part. How's that going to go down? I mean, after after today, I'm feeling confident we're only going to get stronger at this point. We still have a, a long ways to go to be where we want to be for internationals. So, yeah, looking at it that way, I think we'll be at a, at a good spot by the time we play them. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Good luck to you. Congrats again on this awesome 3-0. And shoutouts time is now. Uh, yeah, as always, shout outs to Tempo Storm. Thanks for the support. Shout outs to all of our sponsors, Red Wolf Twitch, NVIDIA, Overwolf. And shout outs to all the fans. Thanks for the support. Shout outs to our coach, our coach Soy. He's doing a great job, really helping us out. Shout out to Kala still. Please don't bite me. <laughs> <laughs> Ka and, yeah, Kala's biting you? Is this like a way of getting you to work harder in scrims or? <laughs> Uh, he has his, it's it's dark collar, we call him. <laughs> Sometimes he's mean. <laughs> but, ow! <laughs> uh, yeah, shout-outs to my team, shout-outs to Vin. Great job today, and, yeah, great job to everyone. All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, you, we'll let you go handle all that. <laughs> go celebrate with your team. I, there was clearly obvious <laughs> biting, like nibbling. I, I don't know. <laughs> Not unlike Brightwing's going to be doing it. Oh, oh, hey. It's, Don't it's let us back. know what's in that box. We're going to look at a closer look at North American standings. We have seen the uh, regular standings, but now we're going to take a closer uh, peek at the expanded standings because as we talked more and more about the match between Tempo Storm and Heroes Hearth, it's not just the wins and losses in the matches that matter, but also your game's record too, J.O. The game record comes first before we get to the head-to-head -head because 15-3 looks great, but if Heroes Hearth finds a way to come in and they 3-1 or 3-0, they still have a better win-loss ratio, and that plus-minus is definitely in favor for them, so we'll see how that plays out in the future and coming in next week. But Tempo Storm schedule next week, Gilly, in particular, Heroes Hearth is going to be their first big test between both those teams still undefeated. Yes, Heroes Hearth Esports and Tempo Storm will go into that match without dropping a single series this entire part, which makes that awesome. And then finally, Tempo Storm in week five will play versus Endemic. Endemic has, after Octalysis today, Heroes